Hey, welcome into the ShopFix channel, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. So I'm really excited about today's episode because I'm going to give you a full tour of the new redesigned shop. And I recently redesigned it because I needed to save some more space to work on larger projects and to add some more tools. So without further ado, let's get right into this shop tour. Shop Fix. It's for the love of woodworking. Let's start this tour off at the miter saw station. And I want to show you all the features of this cart that I built. So right off the bat, one of the most important features that I think is the dust hood that contains all the dust. So I have two dust collection hoses on either side of the miter saw that sucks up all the dust shooting off the blade. And then the box keeps all the other dust basically contained. And so that's been great ever since I built that. I did build a extension table to hold boards and I can put really long boards on here and the length from here to here can support a really long board. And it, if I'm doing a really heavy board that's kind of uh, teeter-tottering because it's so long, I can use this hold down clamp. And so it doesn't really need to be any longer than that because either A, I just hold it with my hand and it's just fine, or I just use this hold down clamp. So either way works. So I don't really need to make this any longer than it has to be. I did add this fence right here. And really the main reason for that is because I like uh, clamping on a stop block. So if I'm trying to cut out a bunch of boards at a certain measurement, I'll just clamp a square right here and then you know they'll all be the same cut. And so that's primarily why I have this. Now, what's really cool about this miter saw station is that it has a ton of lumber storage. So underneath here, we have all of my cutoffs. So every, everything that I'm cutting, like if I'm cutting a really long board and I get like a 12 inch cutoff, well, I can just immediately put it down here and it's really handy. This thing holds a ton of lumber. I have a couple of sheet goods down here that are wider panels and then a bunch of cutoffs. And then underneath I can store some wider panels as well. So that's super helpful. Another important feature of this miter saw station is that it can be leveled to the ground and it has casters. So the casters can be engaged with this lever. And now the miter saw station is up on this wheel. And so if you engage all four, then it can be mobile. When you release that, then the miter saw station goes onto the leg levelers. And I'm in a garage and like all garages, they're sloped downward. And so I have to level the far side up way more than this side and the leg levelers do that perfectly and it makes it to where I have a flat level surface to work on. The last thing I want to mention about the miter saw station is that I'm using the DeWalt DWS 779 miter saw and it's worked really great. I highly recommend the DeWalt brand miter saws. So that about wraps up the miter saw station. Let's move on to the next section. The next thing that I want to share with you is the flip cart that I recently designed. So I used a 3 fourths threaded steel pipe for the middle of the flip cart. I used 3 fourths sheathing material for the tops of the flip cart. And then for the middle to make the box, I used strips of 3 fourths MDF and I just drilled a hole in the center of the MDF. That's the diameter of the steel pipe. So it fits snug, but can flip on the steel pipe. And so let me show you how it works. So these dowel pins on either side basically hold it flat and level. And when I remove them, then that enables it to flip. So flipping this thing is a breeze. You just have to start it flipping and it goes all the way around. And then this two by four right here, it basically rests on the two by four of the structure of the flip cart. And then once you're there, you can take the dowel pins again and put them on the opposite side of this two by four. And now it's locked in. And what's even cooler is that I actually routed dust collection right to the station. And so I simply can put my dust collection right in and then I'm ready to go. And to flip it back over, pop it off, put it to the side, 
take out the dowel pins. And then it flips back the other way. And then put the dowel pins in the opposite side of the two by four. And that's how it works. And obviously with the Dewalt planer, that dust collection, you have to add on this. So that just pops on and then I can grab the dust collection hose and pop it on. And so you can see how quick that can be. Um, Cause I was thinking like, all right, so maybe having a flip cart would be an inconvenience because I'd have to flip it. I'd have to, you know, do the dust collection, all this stuff every time I want to use the machine. But honestly, flipping it like that takes what 30 seconds you know i mean that doesn't take much time and it saves an incredible amount of space in my workshop so i definitely have liked it so far the last thing that i would mention about the flip cart is that it's on four locking casters and it makes it really easy to move around the shop wherever i need it so that about wraps up the flip cart design and while we're in this area i can cover a couple other features over here so I have this cabinet right above me here, and this just stores some of my glue, some of my adhesive, and of course you gotta have WD-40. <laughs> but yeah, just some uh, random odds and ends in there. Uh, what's cool is though that my brother Mikey actually built this. And so uh, he built this, I believe, in uh, woodworking shop class at high school, and he didn't really need to use it anymore, but I was like, oh bro, let me get that like it'll be perfect in my shop he built it really nice got some nice trim up here it's on a french cleat and it actually matches this cabinet this one's on a french cleat too um this one i built and this is out of locally sourced cherry and it has this cool natural stick for shelf supports and i really like this i was going to put it in the house but i had to keep it out here because i'm spending most of my time out here anyway i also recently designed these mallets so this one's made out of an Osage tree. So that was pretty cool. Um, I keep my pencils up here uh, just for quick access so I can grab them. I'm always needing pencils. You can never have enough and keep them sharp. Uh, sharp pencils definitely help out in woodworking. Uh, you don't want to be using dull ones. I actually keep a whole jar of sharp pencils because as soon as they go dull, I'll just like put them in a pile and grab a sharp one. Always working with a sharp pencil. That's important. Uh, I got my clock up here that I made, and that's just uh, out of pine, and it, I don't know, I just really like it. I put it up there, um, definitely a cool feature of the workshop, and probably one of the coolest features in my workshop is uh, this picture my dad made for me. So it's printed on metal, and so it's a perfect shop picture, can't get damaged, uh, but it's a collage of some of my early woodworking. Uh, more importantly, woodworking with my grandpa. And so he found all the best pictures of me and my grandpa woodworking together. And I have some of his machines like the drum sander. I'll show you later in this tour. I actually still have that sander. So that's pretty special. I have his scroll saw as well. So I think that's pretty cool. But me and him did a lot of woodworking together and he's a primary influence of why I got into woodworking and why I kept woodworking and it's just really cool that uh, I had this picture to remind me um, of the times that me and him spent in the wood shop. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that about wraps up this area of the workshop. So let's go on to the next area. Now we're at the back of my workshop where I house most of my lumber on this two by four lumber rack. And I try to make it as big as possible because honestly, the number one thing that I need in this workshop is lumber storage because I want a lot of lumber on hand to be able to use for projects and I want it up out of the way. So this two by four lumber rack came in great handy. It has 45 degree supports and can hold a ton of weight. And so that's the main feature in the back here. I have an air filter here, a shop box air filter, and I run that most of the time when I'm woodworking just to keep the air clean. And it's best to position these off to the side of your workshop so that the air can circulate in a circular direction. 
Uh, I guess the only other thing would be this clamp rack I built. I just built it out of scrap wood and basically just made sure they had slots that were the correct size for the clamps that I'm using. And so that was a pretty cool design and it just uses these little 45 degree supports to help hold up the weight and then the whole thing is screwed into the studs. And so that basically covers it for this side of the workshop. As far as temperature control goes in the workshop, when it's hot in the summer months, I use the ceiling mounted fan. And then when it's really cold in the winter months, I use this thermal infrared heating unit and both work really well to get it more comfortable to work out here when the temperatures are in their extremes. So that about covers the temperature control. And this is kind of where I house that. It is wired into a dedicated uh, circuit on the ceiling. So everything that's plugged in the ceiling is on a dedicated circuit and that's routed all the way from the breaker. And that's kind of what I did in the workshop. I brought two 20 amp lines all the way to the workshop so that I can have one line dedicated for everything on the ceiling and then one line for all the machines. And then I also have one more line for the dust collector that I'll show later. This area of my workshop also houses my hand tool cabinet, so let me show you that next. So my hand tool cabinet houses everything from measuring devices all the way to pliers. And everything is hung on dowel rods, and the dowel rods just sit in a piece of cherry lumber that's in the back of the tool cabinet. And so I also have these bins that organize smaller parts. I have a ton of room left for any odds and ends that I need. And this hand tool cabinet is positioned right behind my table saw workstation. So I figured let's cover the table saw workstation next. So the workstation houses a Dewalt job site table saw. And ever since I built this, it's been like the bread and butter of my workshop. And that's mainly because of the large work surface that it creates. So I have a three foot by five foot work surface to build projects, to do glue ups on. It's just so valuable in a workshop and it's the largest work surface that I have in here. Another important aspect of my table saw workstation is the storage underneath the table saw. So I have two large shelving units down here to store all my table saw cutoffs and then all the table saw accessories and jigs. And so that saves a ton of space. I love having all that room accessible under the table saw. Now this table saw is also on leg levelers just as my miter saw station is and that's super important to get a level surface to do all my projects on. And then I also have it hooked up to my dust collection unit and can be turned off and on with the blast gate. And so that covers all the important aspects of this table saw workstation. Let's go on to the next area of my workshop. All right, so on this side of the workshop, I house my 60 inch workbench. I have a 12 inch variable speed drill press by Wynn. I have hardware storage. I have some upper cabinets here for more storage. And I also have three drawers in the workbench for storage. So I house all of my bits and such for the drill press in the drawer in the workbench right here. So I have all my Brad Point drill bits and then I got my Forcer bits in there. And then I have some specialized drill bits like a hole cutter and countersink bit and such in there. I store some of my chisels in the bottom one, but mainly this area is for, you know, building stuff on the workbench and then gathering materials. I have so much hardware here. This houses everything as far as screws, bolts, nails, springs, electrical wiring nuts. I have screw anchors, hooks, things for picture frames. I mean, I have it all right here. Over here towards the front of my workshop, I house a lot of my power tools and some of my bigger machines. So I have my central machinery wood lathe here. I have my drum sander by Delta, and this was passed down from my grandpa. I used this as a little kid, so that's pretty crazy. I have this scroll saw, which was passed down from my grandpa as well. And then I have a Delta bandsaw that works super well for resawing over here and it is on wheels so I can move it wherever I want in the shop. Uh, the central machinery, the drum sander and scroll saw are actually all on wheels so I can move those wherever I need to. So that's pretty nice. 
in these cabinets, I have various things. So in this one, I have some things for the wood lathe. I have my Craig jig and then some electrical stuff in there. In this cabinet, I have all of my stains and finishes and I also have glue in here. So I have everything from boil linseed oil to like polyurethane. I have some wood filler and everything I need to stain with all in that cabinet. In this cabinet, I just have some odds and ends. I have some clock parts some corner clamp vices, gloves, just all sorts of stuff in there. And then the main cabinet back here houses all of my power tools. So these are just all power tools that I use often during projects and I have them accessible in these cabinets here. And then above this cabinet tree right here, I house two ladders and that's super important. I use the ladder a lot in the workshop if I need to access stuff on the ceiling or some of the top shelves. So last but not least, we'll cover the dust collector that I have. So I was able to fit this dust collector back here in the corner and so it doesn't really waste any space and that's kind of nice to just have it back here in the corner. Uh, this box of the miter saw actually kind of insulates the sound a little bit so that it's not too loud. It's kind of in a almost like a half box so it kind of keeps it quieter. The one thing about the Supermax dust collector is it doesn't have a second stage. And so when you think about getting dust collection in your shop, you want to make sure that you get something that has a second stage or you buy a second stage. Because what will happen is if you're planing uh, lumber or jointing lumber, all of those chips go straight all at once into the tube and into the dust collection unit and all of it just gets stuck right at the entrance of the dust collector. And so then it just stops sucking up any of the chips or the dust. And so what the second stage does is all the chips get dumped into the bucket. And if they're too heavy to be sucked up in, well, it just stays in the bottom of the trash can and then all the fine dust particles get to filter through. And so it keeps collecting all the dust. And so that's super important. And I definitely recommend routing dust collection to your miter station. That helps out a lot. And I would say the planer and the jointer make the most material waste that gets sucked up. So I would definitely route dust collection to a planer and a jointer. And routing the dust collection unit to a table saw is also not a bad idea. That'll keep your table saw really clean. Well, that about wraps up today's shop tour, but I really hope you found this video valuable in deciding how to design your workshop, or maybe you wanted to redesign an aspect of your workshop, and this video gave you an idea. If it did, smash that like button. That really helps me out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to the ShopFix channel, consider subscribing today. For longtime subscribers, I bet you can tell how much of a difference this redesign made in the workshop. And so I'm excited to build new projects with you. And with the space that I have now, I can build much larger projects. So I'm also excited about that. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your future woodworking projects. Take care.